Hello, good evening to you. Welcome to the Wednesday Bible study. Such a joy to come to your homes. I hope that you are ready with your Bible, pen and book. We're going to dive more deeper. What are we looking at? How to thrive in a world that is in turmoil. So today is part three. We have moved on to part three. You joined us first time today. I would encourage you to go to our website or YouTube channel and look uh, listen to part one and part two, and then listen to part three so that you will have a clear understanding. So you can, the links will come at the bottom of the screen for our website and the YouTube channel. You can go through that link and watch all our Bible studies. Our library has plenty of Bible studies. Freely you can watch anytime at your convenience. Okay? Shall we pray and start? Precious Father, thank you for this freedom and this privilege that we have to sit at home you know, in a comfortable environment and listen to your word. Whereas many in the world does not have this privilege, but you have given us the freedom. I pray that you will give us the wisdom, God, to redeem the time, to use the time to the best, Lord, so that we can invest our time in your kingdom. Today, Holy Spirit of God, we totally depend on you. I depend on you to teach your people. I pray that all the children who are listening right now will depend on you, to receive from you. May their eyes of understanding be open. May every uh, clogging in their minds be released and there shall be peace in their heart and mind to receive what you have to serve them this small evening god thank you for this time and privilege and for all of these facilities father we we don't take it for granted we receive it with gratitude and thankfulness in jesus mighty name and everyone say amen okay so part three thriving in a world in turmoil uh, pray for Israel. Um, it's important, but I hope that, as I said, what is the first thing that you need to do to thrive in a world in turmoil? What is the first thing? Discern the times and the seasons. I've been teaching a lot about Israel, Ezekiel war, and you can just see the signs of it. Now, precious people of God, after Afghanistan, what happened to the United States, America? Russia and Iran got bold, okay? Now, what happened in Israel will make them even bold to do certain things. So, uh, still Israel is baffled about how their intelligence failed and most of the uh, missiles were not taken down by Iron Dome uh, and they feel that there's some... Uh, some country behind infiltrating to the system and I don't be surprised if it is Russia because Russia and Iran are the ones who are going to spearhead the Ezekiel 38 war. Okay? I have taught you in detail. So read the times and the seasons. Please read the times and the seasons and watch out your spiritual walk with God because if you want to know more about what I'm talking, go to our website or the YouTube and re-listen to all the end time studies that I have taught through the help of the Holy Spirit. And prepare yourself. Keep yourself ready in all seasons. Amen? So what is we are seeing in Israel is all taking shape towards Ezekiel 38, 39 war. That's what, how I see it. Now, last week, we stopped at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25 to 28, where I showed you that God will shake all things. He'll once again shake heaven and earth. Okay? But in that, God says that there are things can be shaken and there are things that cannot be shaken. Okay? Do you remember that? Shall we read it again? Hebrews 12, 25 to 28. Let's start from there. See, see to it 
Can you see? The word of God is saying, see, see, see what's happening. See to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape when they refused him, who warned them on earth, how much less will we? If we turn away from him who warns us from heaven. At that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised. God has promised. You know when what happens when God promises, he won't rest. He won't sit until he has fulfilled his promise. He, now he has promised what? Once more I will shake not only the earth, but, the, but also the heavens, first heaven and second heaven. The words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken, removing of what can be shaken, removing of what can be shaken, that is created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Stay with me. Remove, remain. Shaken, not shaken. So once more, God has promised. Now, if you have followed our God, you know when he promises, he delivers. So he has promised what? Once more, I'm going to shake the heaven and the earth. Heavens and the earth. And when I shake it, things that can be shaken will be removed and things that cannot be shaken will remain that's where we stopped last week so there are things that cannot be shaken in heaven and on earth understand that and what is that what that cannot be shaken on earth when god shakes is the kingdom of god Everything else will shake. Now Jesus said, if you build your foundation on a rock, no storm, no calamity can shake you. Go with me to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Turn your Bibles. Don't depend on the screen. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Who, who is a man that has built his house on a rock? A man not only hears the words of mine, but puts them into practice. Not only he hears, but he puts them into practice. He's a man that builds his house on a rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Which house? That house heard the word of God and put the word into practice. That house was beaten by rain, streams, winds. Which house? The house that heard God's word and put the word into practice. That house was beaten by streams and rain and wind. Yet it did not fall. It, yet it did not shake. Yet it did not shake. I, will, I promise you I will once more shake the earth and the heavens. Things can, that cannot be shaken will remain. Things that can be shaken will be removed. So what is going to remain on earth when God shakes the earth is the house that built on a rock and what is that house? That house is the house that hears and put the 
put the words of God into practice. All the other houses are going to collapse. Verse, uh, it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Verse 26, but everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built this house on sand the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. So, precious people of God, the shaking is coming. How do you thrive in a world that is in turmoil? Number one, discern the times and the seasons. Number two, become born again. Be born of God. Number three, get your priorities right. Okay? I hope that you are understanding what the Spirit of the Lord is revealing. Everything else that can be shaken will be shaken. Ask yourself, what are some of the things that can be shaken on earth? What are the things that can be shaken on earth? Governments? Definitely. Governments will shake. And we have already seen. Banks? Yes, definitely. Most of the banks are closing down, crashing down. Church denominations? Yes, after the COVID, about 5,000 odd churches have closed down in, in states. Families? Definitely. Families are crumbling. Individuals? Yes. Those who you thought will live forever after the COVID, they are not to be seen. Those who you thought are solid people who, who will achieve great things on this earth, they are vanished like grass after the COVID. So those, these things, what we hold on to and think they are eternal, are things that are going to shake precious people of God. So the only family that will survive are those that are built their house on the rock. And that house is a house that hears God's word and put them into practice. Didn't Noah and the family survive? How did they survive? Ask that question. How did Noah and the family survive? They simply heard the word of God and they obeyed. What if Noah said, Muna Pisua, the what rain meant? God must be crazy. You know, have you watched that movie? There's a movie called God Must Be Crazy. I didn't watch it, but I saw the title somewhere. You know, today people think God is crazy. And if Noah said, God, are you crazy? Rain? I'm not going to build the boat. Noah would have drowned. But Noah heard the words of God and he obeyed. He obeyed. That's the key. Today, you can hear the voice of God. You can read the voice of God. You can hear the words of God. But are you obeying? That is what causes you not to be shaken. That is what is going to make you thrive in a world that is in turmoil. That's what will cause you to build your house on a solid rock. Hearing his voice and obeying. Are you with me, precious people of God? So if Christian houses are shaking and falling apart, that's a sign that you don't obey his voice. You don't obey his word. If there is a, 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 a resistance or you know, the country's economy is collapsing and crashing. If you are sinking, if you are crashing, that's a sign that you're not built your house on the rock. 
That means you're not, either you're hearing the word of God and not obeying it, or you're not hearing the word of God. Because precious people of God, listen to me. Either these words of Jesus has to be a lie or truth. Tell me, please tell me, the words that, these, these are red letters, huh? This what we read just now, Matthew chapter 7, 24 to 27, is red letters. That means the words of Jesus. So you tell me, are these words as to be either a lie or the truth? So if a Christian's, Christian house is falling apart, or a Christian is falling apart, it's a sign that you're hearing the voice of God or the word of God and you're not obeying. Because if you obey, you will not crash. Yes, problems, what comes on the world will come on you. Are you in moon? No, you're on earth. So what comes on earth is going to come on you. But you will not collapse. You will not crash because Jesus said, the one who heard my word and obeyed, the rain came down, the streams rose, the wind blew on that house, but it didn't fall. It thrived the precious people of God. So, what the question that I'm saying is, asking is that, is these words are true or false? If you say these words are false, pastor, then you don't believe in Jesus. Don't believe in Jesus. If you believe in Jesus, believe in this word. Hear his word and obey. You will thrive in times of turbulence. You know, honestly speaking, precious people of God, sometimes there are times, many times, I preach and I go back home and I, th I have thought to myself, am I wasting my words? Am I wasting my words, God? And then I just keep speaking to myself and say, Raja, where the people hear your words, hear the words of God through you and don't change or change, it doesn't matter. You are on duty. You are on duty. You are called for this. Continue to do. So I encourage myself and say, whether you listen and change, put into practice or not, I will continue my duty, the duty that God has given to me. But I'm telling you, turbulence times are coming. Perilous times are coming. And if, as a child of God, if you want to thrive in a world that is in turmoil, understand the times and the seasons. Become born again. Know your priorities. Obey. Listen and obey the words of God. Amen. Don't get angry with me. The truth hurts, it pricks, but if you receive it with meekness and, and put it into practice, your life will change. Your life will be grounded because the shaking is coming. So God is sorting out everything. There are only two categories. Things that can be shaken, things that cannot be shaken. So you and I need to know where we are. Understand where you are. Are you truly in the kingdom that cannot be shaken? Or are you in the world that is already shaking? Already in turmoil? If you're not in the kingdom, and if you're not operating in the principles and the words of the king, you are on sinking ground. So there will be shaking of everything. The kingdom of God also will pass through the shaking, but it will not fall apart. It will not fall apart. It will not collapse. So we will not be exempted from shaking, but the results will be different in our lives. When the earth goes through shaking, you will not be exempted from it, precious child of God. 
But the tribulation that is coming after the rapture is going to be so horrible which you can't even compare what we are going through right now. It will be ten times worse than what is right now. The, the, the shaking that is going to come after the rapture. So, when everything falls apart, when everything is shaking and falling apart, you will stand. You will stand and still sail. Go with me to Psalm chapter 46. Psalm chapter 46. Verse 1 to 5 you're going to read. These are the songs of the sons of Korah, the Levites who served in the tabernacle, in the very presence of God. Psalm chapter 46, verse 1 to 5. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though earth give away. Can I read it again? God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. When? When you hear his word and put the word into practice. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give away and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Listen. And the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quack with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Say, I will not fall. I will hear, I will read his word, and I will obey it. Therefore, I will not fall. My footing is on solid rock. Amen. Go with me to Haggai chapter 2, verse 7. Haggai chapter 2, verse 7. I hope that you're with me. I hope that you are receiving. Thank you, Lord. I will shake all nations and what desired by all nations will come and I will fill this house with glory. Oh, I love this. Says the Lord Almighty. Can I read it again? I will shake all nations. And what is desired by all nations will come. And I will fill my house with glory. You are God's house and church is God's house. So God is saying, when I shake all nations, I will fill my house with glory. Are you with me? When you hear his word, when you obey his word, he will fill you with glory when everything is shaking. It's an opportune time for God to prove that he is with you when there is shaking. Provided that you and I read, hear his word and obey his word. Amen. So God is going to shake all nations. We better be prepared. You know the word nations there is ethnic. It's, it's the Greek word is ethnic. All ethnic ethnicity will be shaken. All people will be shaken. 
but his house will be filled with glory. Amen. So there is only one person that cannot be shaken. There is only one person that cannot be shaken. When God shakes the earth, when the earth goes through turmoil, turbulence, there is only one person that will not be shaken. Not that that person will not go through the turmoil. He will go through that turmoil, but he will not fall apart. He will not be shaken. He will not be removed. He will remain. Who is that person? Who is that person? 1 John chapter 2 verse 15. 1 John chapter 2 verse 15. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Hope that you are receiving. 1 John chapter 2 verse 15. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. So precious people of God, there is one person that will not be shaken is the one who does not love the world. Because if you love the world, you are so engrossed with the world, you will not see the times and the seasons and the shaking that is coming. And when you love the world, you will struggle to obey the word. Because your Putting on rock depends on obeying the word. Your foundation being on the rock depends on obeying the word. Today there are many Christians who hear the word. Very few that obey the word. So don't, don't come and ask me a question saying, so and so is coming to church, pastor. So and so is a born again Christian. Why is he going through trouble? Look close to his life and see whether he is obeying the word. Simply because you are a Christian, you are born again, you are coming to church, doesn't mean you are obeying the word. When you love the word, you will struggle to obey the word. When you struggle to obey the word, your footing is not on the rock. So there is only one person that will thrive in a world that is in turmoil is a person who does not love the world. Amen. The word world there is precious people of God. It is an operative system or a social system. What is world? world is an operative system or a social system. So when you love the operative system that prevails on the earth, which is not of the kingdom, you will struggle to obey God's word. Or when you are engrossed to the social system that is prevailing on earth, which is introduced by the devil, you will struggle to obey the word of God. Then when the shaking comes, God help us. So you cannot love the world and love God. You cannot have both ways going. You cannot have both ways going. Love, I love the world also, Pastor. I love God also. No. You have to choose one path. Jesus said, there's going to be a broad road. There's going to be a narrow road. You can't have both. I'll keep on the broad road and another leg on the narrow road and I'll go like this, Pastor. 
Have you seen that what you call with these wheels on the feet? This they go like this. <laughs> Some Christians are like this on two roads. Ek clock broad road and the other one is a narrow road. No, no, no. You can't travel like that. Jesus said, either you travel on the broad road or on the narrow road. Broad road is leading to destruction. Narrow is leading to life. So it's a choice that you're going to make to thrive in a world that is in turmoil. Choice. You choose life or death, I keep before you. That's what God is saying. It's a choice. Every day it's a choice, precious people of God. Every day from the time that you wake up, there is choices to be made to travel on the narrow road or the broad road. Your choices matter to remain not shaky. So God, precious people of God, loves you and he is a jealous God. He is a jealous God. He will not share his loyalty, your loyalty with anything else. He will not like when you share, share the loyalty that you have towards, with, towards him with anything else. He is a jealous God. He loves you to that extent. So who is the unshakable person? On the earth, let's read verse 17, 1, 1 John, chapter 2, verse 17. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. So the world and its lusts, are passing away. The world and his desires pass away. But whoever does the will of God lives forever. So who thrives? Who does the will of God? So if you love the world so much, you will struggle to obey his word. What is obeying his word is doing the will of God. So who is the person who is going to thrive when the world shakes, when the earth shakes, is the person who does the will of God. I hope that you are receiving this. Who is the unshakable person on earth? The one who is totally committed to the will of God. You know, precious people of God, will of God, being in the will of God is your safety zone. That is why it's very important that we remain in the will of God. When you are outside the will of God, you are outside God's safety zone. As long as you remain in the will of God, God will take responsibility. And when you are outside the will of God, God is not responsible for your security and safety. This is why I scare for people who walk out of their calling. This is why I, I you know, dread for people who refuse the calling of God. Please hear me well. Remaining in the will of God is your safety zone. When you are outside the will of God, you are outside God's safety and security zone. Therefore, please, I beg you, in these times of turmoil and shaking, remain in the will of God. If not, when you are outside the will of God, hear me, thank you Holy Spirit, when you are outside the will of God, every bill that comes to you is, has to be paid by you. When you remain in the will of God, God will take care of your bills. So when God calls you to, to his will, sometimes it's very difficult, precious people of God, to say yes to his will. 
But a lot of people don't understand that even though it is difficult, when you step into his will, that's where you're in a safety zone. When God called me to full-time ministry, I struggled. Six, six months I went up and down with my resignation. Why? Stepping into the will of God is the most difficult thing. The devil will fight it. Because he knows when you're going to be in the will of God, that you're going to be in the safety zone of God. That he cannot infiltrate or touch and do things. So he will try his best to keep you outside the will of God. So that you're not inside the safety and security zone of God. That you will struggle on your own. So precious people of God. Who is, who is the person who is going to remain safe when the earth is going to shake is the person who is in the will of God. Let's read verse 17 again. The world and its desires pass away. world is going to shake and pass away. I'm going to shake all nations. I'm going to shake earth. And that can be shaken, will be shaken. And that cannot be shaken, will remain. And when you are in the will of God, when world and his desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. Underline these words. When you are in the will of God, you cannot be easily shaken. Thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand on your right hand, it will not come near you when you are in the will of God. Will of God is your safety zone. So when God calls you to his will, you calculate. I did that. Now if I leave the bank job, I'm getting so much of salary. And when we calculate, devil will cause you to calculate. Devil will ask you to do an analytic analysis of, of the consequences. And the more you do that, the more you will fear to step into the will of God. Because doing the will of God is, will be challenging. It's not going to be easy. But that is your safety zone in a world that is in turmoil. I hope the things that I'm saying to you is hitting home. I hope that you are receiving. That's what I fear for people. When God's will for them to stay in this nation, they take a flight and migrate to some other country. I fear for you. You are leaving the safety zone of God thinking that the grass is green on the other side. But I'm telling you, God does not say, I will only shake Sri Lanka and leave Canada alone. He's saying, I'll shake all nations. All nations means under the sun, every nation will be shaken. Don't think when you run away, to Canada, you're going to be, uh, you know, not shaken. All nations, I, I promise, says God, I will shake heavens and the earth and all nations. And when he shakes, who will remain unshakable is the one who hears the word and does the word and remains in the will of God. So I'm, if God has called you to migrate, please go. I'm not saying don't migrate. Understand where is the will of God for you. Don't step out of the will of God. So if you want to thrive in a world in turmoil, my counsel to you, commit yourself totally to the will of God. Without reservation, commit yourself totally to the will of God. That's where your safety zone is. You will live forever, unshakable. You will be unshakable as the will of God. Maintain right priorities. Your priorities decide your life. The things that are top priorities are the things 
that you will find time for okay prioritize your life you know what is what in life what you find time for is for the things that are prior, priority in your life whatever that you are prioritized in your life that's what for, for which you will find time if 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 walking with god is not your priority you will never find time for bible reading and praying what is priority in your life you will some or other find time for that prioritize things in your life some people say pastor i can't find any time for the bible church i can't find time pastor but you will find time to eat why priority and that also dietitians have told pastor morning yogurt and this afternoon this okkama uh, uh, that all this schedule then everything is perfectly done why priority what you prioritize is what you desire to do so i'm not saying eating is wrong huh please i also love to eat <laughs> not saying eating is wrong what i'm saying is is the bible more important than food you know church is not your priority conferences are not your priority church meetings are not your priorities leadership meetings are not your priorities serving the church is not your priority bible studies are not priority fasting and prayer is not priority come let's discuss and see how you can serve no pastor i don't have time i have work because it's not your priority but i'm telling you precious people of god when the earth is shaking when this nation is shaking pastor gagan ende pa i'm telling you i'm serious to those who does not have time for god time for church time for the things of god no time for the bible no time for church leadership you don't want to serve you don't want to, everything i'm work 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 when everything shakes i'm not there let the god help you i'm like jonah when jonah went and preached in any way he was expecting god to judge those fellows but god they repented and god saved them jonah was mad with god <laughs> out of jokes precious people of god get your priorities right shaking is coming my words may fall on deaf ears but i have done my duty i have done what god has called me to do so whatever you give give your time to it indicates your priorities here is god's counsel on priority here is god's counsel on priority matthew 6:33 this is the god's counsel on priority right god's number one priority matthew 6:33 seek first f y r s t first his kingdom and his righteousness what is righteousness striving to stand right before him seek my kingdom what is kingdom god's operative system seek first my operative system not the world and also strive to stand right before me and all these things shall be added unto you this is god's priority this is god's number one priority what seek my operative system not the world if you love the world you will please the world and do what the world wants to do and when the world shakes you will not live forever 
So God is saying, seek first, not the world, don't love the world, kingdom, my operative system, and strive to stand right to before me, righteousness. All the other things will be added unto you. This is God's priority in a world that is in turmoil. I hope that you're receiving. All these things, all the things that you need for daily life, God says, I will take care. Why? You are in the will of God. These are the words of Jesus, precious people of God. So Jesus cannot lie. He is the truth. He cannot lie. So if you do this, he will make sure that your needs are met. That you are protected when shaking comes. You know, I have been almost now born again for 30 years. And I'm telling you, God is a faithful God. God is a faithful God. I have never seen him fail for his last 30 years after being his son. I have never seen him fail on his promises when I do what he says. When I obey his word, and be in his will. I have never seen him fail his promises. He is faithful. So this is not a theory that I am teaching. It's a reality based on scripture, scripture proved by experiences. It's not a theory, precious people of God. I'm not just reading a book and coming and teaching you. This is not theory at all. It's reality based on the scripture and experiences. It's proved by experiences. We sought the kingdom of God and he has taken care of every need. Every need. How many of you, how many of you can endorse that statement? Through experience, how many of you can endorse that statement? Pastor, I sought the kingdom. I prioritized him. I, I'm in the center of his will. And I have never lacked anything. Because the shaking is coming. You know, before the rain came, Elijah said, I can hear the sound of the rain. The rain wasn't there. But Elijah said, go and tell Ahab that I can hear the sound of the rain. And I'm telling you, I can hear the sound of shaking coming. But I'm not scared because it's a glorious time for me. Why? When the shaking comes, if you are grounded in the will of God and in the word of God, it's a glorious time for you. Why? God says, I will shake all nations, but this house I will fill with glory. This house I will fill with glory when everything shakes. So shaking is a good news for a child of God who is walking in the will and priorities of God. Not a fearful thing. Because yeah, it's an opportune time for a child who is in the will of God and walking in the priorities of God and in the word of God. Because why? When everything around you is shaking, he fills this house with glory. Shout amen for that. So discern the times that you are living. Become a child of God. Get your priorities right. Be in the will of God. 
Okay, so four things I have said. Discern the times and the seasons that you are living. Become a child of God. Get your priorities right. Live in the will of God. That's doing the word of God. Four. Number five, fifth thing. Fourth, fifth counsel. John, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, verse 2, now, now we are children of God. Now we are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. What we are going to be in the future is not yet being made known, made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him. So, we are now the children of God. What we will be in the future, we do not know. But when he appears, how we will be? We shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Verse 3, very important. All who have this hope, what hope? That we are children of God. He's going to come. And when we see him, we will be like him. And all that who has this hope, what do they do? All who have this hope in him purify themselves. Underline in your Bible, purify. Purify themselves just as he is pure. Number five, how to thrive in a world that is in turmoil is purify yourself. If you have this hope that you are his child, that he's going to come back again, but you do not know how you will be in the future. But when he comes to take you, you will be like him. And when you have this hope, you will purify yourself. You want to thrive in a world that is in turmoil? Understand the times and the seasons that you're living. Become born again. Get your priorities right. Be in the will of God. Purify yourself. Purify yourself daily. When you go out in the morning to work, you come back home, you tell your wife, shirt me trouser Wash my shirt. Wash my trouser. Why? Why can't you fold it and keep it in the cupboard and take it back and iron it and wear it? Because you've collected dirt when you went out. That's why you wash your clothes. Why don't you wash your soul every day? Because when you come out, your eyes are going to see. Today when I was coming, there was a girl waiting in the bus stand with a very short skirt. Tagalamam belu, belu namata. Say, Lord, wash my eyes, cleanse my soul that I don't conceive any lustful thoughts. Cleanse your soul every day. Because we are humans. So when you go out every day, if you have this hope, what hope? That you are a child of God. That he's coming back to take you home. You do not know how you will look in the future. But when you see him, you will see him as he is. Therefore, when you have this hope, purify yourselves. 
You have to purify yourself. Every day when you go out and come, sit in God's presence and say, Lord, wash my conscience with your precious blood. Wash my mind with your precious blood. Wash my eyes with my precious blood. Wash my ears, God. Cleanse me. Let me keep my conscience clear, God. My mind be washed and renewed with your word. You know, keep yourself, purify yourself. If you want to thrive in your world, in a world that is in turmoil, I hope that you are receiving. If you are not purifying yourself, you are deceiving yourself. If you are not purifying yourself, you are deceiving yourself. You can say, "I am waiting for His return," but if you are not purifying yourself, if we, if we are not purifying ourselves, we are deceiving ourselves. Because I am a pastor, I am not exempted from temptations. I am just like you. I have to watch out my soul, watch out my conscience, wash myself every day, keep myself purified. Mark those who are truly waiting for his return. They purify, purify themselves just as he is pure. Because the Bible says that he is pure. Those who are with this hope waiting for his return, purify themselves. Amen? So God has, one, only, God has only one standard of purity. That is Jesus. That is Jesus. Uh, I want to talk to the younger women, younger women in the church, children, daughters of God. I want to talk to you. It is, it is very natural to look pretty and attractive on the outside. Very natural. It's nothing wrong. It's not wrong. It is not sinful. It is natural, precious daughters of God, to look attractive and beautiful on the outside. But that is the external. That's the external. But there's a different kind of prettiness, which is internal. There's a beauty that comes from the internal purity. Yes, nothing wrong in adorning yourself and being beautiful and attractive on the external. But there is a prettiness that comes from internal. There's a beauty in that. When you're external, prettiness begins to fade there is something in you will never fade. The pure, 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 uh, pureness and the holiness of God on the internal. That will never fade. But the external attractiveness and the beauty will fade. So holiness of God is true spiritual beauty. You can strive to be pretty on the outside, but the real pretty is on the inside, precious child of God. Talking to the daughters of God. You know, it shines through your eyes, that beauty. You, the people who has it, you can see it. The shine that comes through their eyes, through the holiness that is on the inside. They look differently, they act differently, they speak differently. You don't have to be religious, you only strive to be pure. Pure on the inside, holiness on the inside. There's a hunger in the hearts of the multitude to be pure. And I believe that I need to stop here. 
and take it forward from there next week and by next week I should finish hopefully I should finish driving in a world in turmoil so I hope that you take down notes as much as I speak to you I am speaking to myself I need to watch out the areas that I have mentioned and work on those areas you know even the leadership in the father's house I keep telling don't go outside the vision everything what we do must be within the vision don't step out of the vision because the vision is the will of God that is given to you so I keep reminding the leadership anything that you do it has to come within the framework of the vision that God has given to the ministry because if you step out of the will out of the vision then you're on your own you are out of the safety zone. So precious people of God, discern the times and the seasons. Become born again. Get your priorities right. Be in the will of God. Purify yourselves. Fight things that have shunned. How to thrive in a world that is in turmoil. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I want to say thank you for speaking to us on another Wednesday. You said, those who hear your word and put them into practice are the ones who are going to build their house on a solid rock. Even as we hear, heard your word today, give us the grace to put them into practice at any cost. Lord, at any cost, to put your word into practice, God. I pray for people who are listening to me and who are struggling to live the word out. I pray that you will release a special grace. Even as you have a desire and a hunger today, saying that, oh Lord, I want to obey your word, may his grace be released to you to obey his word. That you will pay any price to Obey his word. Lord, give me the grace. Give me the grace. Give me the grace, God, to obey your word at all times. And also to remain in your will. It takes faith, precious child of God, to remain in the will of God. It takes active faith to, be, to remain in the will of God. Because though some of the things that God demands you to be in the will of God, you can't take those steps without faith. And I pray that your faith will not fail, that you will say yes to his calling and take steps towards his will. May God help you with your faith. Thank you, Father, for speaking to us. I pray that many will come within your will, O oh God, and will be remaining in the safety zone. I pray that I remain in your will, Father, that I won't step out of your will. Give me the grace. Lord, I discipline myself to remain in your will, O oh God. Just take time to pray and say, Lord, I want to prioritize things that are your priority and I want to remain in your will Father oh that the Jonah ran away from the will of God and he was outside the safety zone and he learned his lesson in a very bad way Sometimes maybe the struggle that you're going through, the challenges that you're going through because you're outside the will of God. You know that you are outside the will of God. You know what God called you to do, but you have run away from it. And now you are struggling. Get back to your will of God. Get back to your calling of God. That is your zone of safety and provision. Thank you, Father.
Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. We give you all the praise and honor and glory to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. <clears throat> Thank you for patiently listening and receiving. Now I believe that you will obey this word. I hope that you have registered for the conference happening on 28th. If you're not registered, please speak to Marisa. Uh, the Passion Kids Conference is happening. And also Zealous conferences for the adults happening on the 28th from 8 a.m. onwards. I hope if you're the Father's House family, I hope to see all of you there. It's going to be an awesome time together being built by the Word of God and some good fellowship. Amen. Hoping to see you. Um, um, if you if you know any Tamil speaking and singular speaking people, we have the Tamil and singular Bible study on Thursdays. Uh, please encourage them. Give them the link of our YouTube channel and ask them to watch because uh, there's some awesome Bible studies that are going on in Tamil and Singhala that you will help them to grow in the Lord. Okay? God bless you. Have a blessed, blessed week. This Friday, we will not have the Bible study because uh, uh, Sean has finished his study. Uh, Pastor Timothy will start the following Friday with a new topic. So this Friday, you have a break. So just... Uh, Meditate on whatever you have studied so far. Okay? God bless you. Have a blessed, blessed week. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant and faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great Setting same, I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me. Yeah. Oh, I've seen it, I've seen your From age to age, so the earth may pass away, your word remains the same. Your history can prove there's nothing you can do, you're faithful and true. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I remain steadfast and let my
from the rising sun to the setting same I will praise your name from the rising sun to the setting same I will praise